something to sprinkle on my salad. Boy, that is a heat sink, isn't it? Jeez. This thing must weigh 10 pounds. Caution, risk of equipment damage connecting the solar array or battery with reverse polarity will permanently damage the TriStar MPPT. Really? You guys don't have reverse polarity protection? This does not have the Ethernet port. It does have RS-232, which I didn't know about. And it does have the spot to clip the meter in there. And that just looks like a phone line. No, it's got six. Six wire phone line. <clears throat> Risk of fire and shock. Connect battery terminals prior to the connection of array terminals. The battery positive terminal has a red cover. The solar positive has a yellow cover. Red. Yeller. There's a bunch of dip switches up here too, so we'll have to see what that's all about. So I would say based on feel alone, I mean, usually when a product is heavy for its size and it's electronic, it means it's well built or really old. batteries we'll get uh, some cables made up here six gauge stranded so I'm gonna go make up some battery cables See if we got power. Yep, lights on. 
and we should be able to check voltage 12.4 not fully charged but not fully dead here is the Morningstar MPPPPPT solar charge controller which was a lot of money 45 uh, amp version Wait, what is this, honey? What? This is the This is the battery temperature sensor here. Oh, yes, of course. Battery temperature. Not the battery voltage sensor. Don't confuse the two. Of course. What do you think I am? I don't know. All that's left is the battery voltage sensor wire, I think. I'm blowing myself up. Alright. That's, that's the solar. Well, the time has come to finally get a new inverter charger. The old chargers on these RVs are terrible, or converter, or whatever you want to call it, both. They charge at too high of a voltage, they will ruin your batteries, they don't stop charging once the batteries reach where they should go into float, they're just uh, on. Here's some power. Enjoy battery. So I got this new trip light inverter charger today off Craigslist for 250 bucks. And now I need to figure out how to wire it up, which I'm not too sure how to do. Well, not this part, but the rest of it. So we're going to have to figure all that out because this all needs to stay and that part all needs to go. So I don't know if it's two pieces, I don't think so, but it looks like I might be able to get in there and drill out that rivet. So as you can see I've done some of my own wiring already. This is for the fridge line. This is the inverter I installed which I will be pulling out. Um, and there's some wiring in here as well for the voltmeter. There's also a wiring in there for the fan, the 12 volt fan by the bed. Um, but this is all pretty much factory. So the way I know it is, this first one is the main 30 amp breaker. The next one's for the air conditioner. This one is for the uh, converter and battery charger. And this one goes to the AC plugs in the rest of the camper. Uh, I'm not sure if this one goes to some plugs as well. I'll have to do some testing on that. So, yeah, let's get this old battery charger out. There's a bolt on that side and a screw on that side. That makes perfect sense. Let's see what we can do here. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to have to think about this just a bit. I don't want to destroy this. So I might be better off getting a fuse panel or even making a fuse panel and switching over to the newer automotive fuses anyway because I, I would like prefer to do that. Well, maybe what I'll do is get this inverter out of here next, the old one, because I know that that's not staying. What the hell did that wire go to? There we go. Power to the accessories in the RV. I just have to decide where I'm going to put this. Under there or over here. Now if I put it right here, it, it would be nice and convenient. So 
So right now I'm leaning towards making it work up here somehow. So here we are at the RV electrical um, dealie. This was the negative and positive main lugs that I just removed and I'm removing some of the other negatives. I have all these color coded so I can replace them. But this box has got to go. So I got the wires out, the 12 volt wires all out. They're just I marked them all. So you can see this one's for the radio auxiliary, this one's negative lug even though it's white, this one's a positive even though it's black. Here's the fan. And here's the rest of the stuff that goes to the RV. Now I'm getting a new switch panel that I ordered today through Amazon Prime, so it'll be here shortly. And uh, we're going to replace this style with the new blade style that's more common in uh, automotive applications. Here we are with the new inverter charger in its place. There's an access panel above, which is nice. There's plenty of room behind it for cooling. Um, so that's excellent. Do need to get some screws in there to mount it up properly. Got that firmly installed. Got two screws in the back, these two up front. So now I'm going to go ahead and start feeding the wires in. So moving right along here, we got the AC wired up in and out. This comes in the top here and then comes out to the inverter. So then I have the official shore power run it off the inverter or go to the generator. That comes out. So then we can use this to choose where we want to go or what we want to take our power from. Now if it's plugged into the inverter, if this is plugged into the inverter, this breaker number three has to be off so power is not getting fed into that. So it's not just looping through itself that can uh, damage the system I guess. So that's definitely something to be aware of. So now the next step is going to be to hook up the wires for the battery. Whoa! Not a good start. This looks like we should do positive first, eh? Get that taken care of. So I got a 730 seconds. That would be the proper size. Interesting, so let's turn the power on. What the hell's going on here? What I need to do is shut off this halogen. Oh, I just have the TV on for an example. So there's the 120 when it's just passing through, and then we'll go to inverter. Not even a hundred, more like 98, somewhere in there. I don't know if that's going to damage any equipment, but I don't like it. I mean, that's like brownout status, basically. I guess I can't say I'm disappointed. I guess I can say I'm disappointed. I'm a little disappointed right now. But we'll see how it works in the long run. So after about six weeks on the road, uh, we've been using our solar quite a bit and it is awesome to have it. The uh, inverter charger down here has been working very well. The only thing that's an issue is the load sense dial doesn't work properly. And uh, actually, I bought the inverter charger off Craigslist. After I got everything all hooked up and uh, set good to go, I found out that the charger part of the inverter charger did not work. Fortunately, the guy from Craigslist was awesome. He had a second one because he used to sell them, and uh, he swapped it out for this one, and we, we were able to meet up, and he was good to his word, which is always scary when you're dealing with Craigslist, but everything worked out great. I have the new fuse panel right here. These are the uh, automotive-style fuses, the blade type. 
and uh, you know if anything blows they'll be very easy to replace that way and uh, yeah the solar is hooked up to the laptop here and you can actually see how many watts you're getting so even on a cloudy day here we're getting 70 70 something watts 70 to 80 watts and that's pretty great um, the cord that I'm using is a USB to serial adapter and I had one that I had got off Amazon or from China or something like that and it did not work so I called uh, Morningstar and they actually sent me that cable for free just to make sure everything was working uh, properly and sent me the drivers and a little disc and everything so that was really awesome of them so I have the Morningstar MPPT 45 amp solar charge controller and the trip light RV 750 something or other so it's 750 watts uh, inverter and a 45 or 11 amp battery charger so all that's been set up been working really well for us giving us lots of power uh, you know there's a, a regular household bulb I think 60 watts or something like that that I use occasionally when you really need to light up the area and it's been great so I highly recommend solar to uh, to anybody who's going to be in an RV especially if you're going to do any boondocking okay